Fitzroy, an English naval officer and scientist, resolved to undertake a seafaring voyage to study climate fluctuations and the enigmatic secrets of life. Understanding the expedition would require substantial time, he extended invitations to fellow scholars. Thus, he approached the British scientist, Henslow. Henslow, however, withdrew from the journey, citing the lengthy voyage as his reason. Yet Henslow promised to send a disciple in his place. This disciple was named Charles Robert Darwin. Darwin held a profound interest in the study of life forms. They embarked upon the sailing ship HMS Beagle, a crew of approximately 72 souls. Darwin's role was to observe diverse species and construct geological patterns. While Roy and his team studied coastal areas, Darwin delved into the mysteries of the inland. Throughout their journey, Darwin gathered fossils of diverse species from disparate locations. Their voyage endured. After five years, they returned. Darwin then commenced the intricate process of analyzing the gathered data. However, as he analyzed, Darwin noticed something peculiar. Initially, he assumed a mistake in his calculations, but with each stage of analysis, Darwin arrived at puzzling conclusions. Even Darwin found it hard to believe them at first. Then, after 20 years of rigorous studies and experiments, he published what would become one of the most controversial scientific books in history. When Darwin's theory saw the light of day, it was met with severe criticism. The primary cause of this was the deeply entrenched Christian faith of Darwin's contemporary society. Darwin's theory disrupted the belief that God created man and that man is superior to all creatures. Hence, it was only years after Darwin's death that his theory gained global acceptance. Darwin thus ushered in a new epoch in science. Today, with the assistance of modern techniques and observations, Darwin's theory is gaining even more strength. So, what exactly is Darwin's theory? Would you believe if I said that all living beings we observe today do not possess a fixed and unchanging form? Indeed, changes are constantly occurring in all living beings on Earth, including us. Let's delve deeper. We know all living beings on Earth are capable of reproduction. We can classify this reproduction into two categories. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Let's first consider asexual reproduction. Single-celled organisms like amoebae reproduce asexually. This process involves splitting into two identical copies. Naturally, one copy of the DNA from the original body is transferred to the second. Hence, these two new amoebae are exact copies of each other. But there's a minor issue here. We know perfection is an elusive concept in our natural world. This imperfection also manifests during DNA copying. That is to say, the second DNA will not be an exact copy of the first. Minor discrepancies occur. These discrepancies differentiate the two beings. Such discrepancies occurring during copying are referred to as mutations. Over time, these mutations can create some differences in the physical form and function of the two organisms. Small differences like these accumulate over time, leading to substantial differences. Now, let's consider sexual reproduction. Here, things are slightly more complex. Assume two organisms reproduce. 
The offspring they produce will carry half the DNA from each parent. Therefore, the offspring will exhibit traits from both its mother and its father. Moreover, it will also possess new traits due to DNA mutation. If this offspring survives long enough to reproduce, its DNA will blend with its partner's DNA. Subsequently, some of its characteristics will be passed on to some of its offspring. If these minor changes persist across generations, they can culminate in organisms so different, it's hard to believe. So, you should now understand how organisms change. But you might have a lingering question, if organisms evolve this way, shouldn't the Earth be teeming with a far greater variety of species than we see today? This is where Darwin's principle of natural selection enters the scene. Survival in nature is an arduous feat. While it seems relatively easy for us humans, it's not quite so simple for other creatures. Invasion of microorganisms, insect infestations, climate fluctuations, predation, resource scarcity, these are just some of the numerous obstacles they must overcome. However, it's not always the physically strongest creatures that survive. Those adapted to these environmental challenges are the ones that endure. Only the survivors carry on to the next generation. Those that don't become extinct. The creatures we observe on Earth today have endured these natural trials. But we cannot predict whether they'll survive future changes because nature itself is continually evolving. In essence, every creature we see on Earth, including humans, is a product of evolution. The differences seem vast from the outside, but at the DNA level, the disparity is minimal. Evolution is an ongoing process. The key question is whether it's happening at a pace visible to us. It's a process that unfolds over thousands of years and is impossible to observe within a human lifetime. However, we possess irrefutable evidence of evolution. Today, with the help of the latest techniques and observations, we can appreciate the profound implications of the concept of evolution. Yet even today, some among us do not fully accept the theory of evolution. The primary reason is their incomplete understanding of it. You might ask, What's the point of understanding this now? How does it affect our everyday lives, right? But the reality is different. Today, Earth faces an unprecedented threat. The reckless interference of humans with our environment has led to shifts in the biosphere's balance. Numerous species have vanished from the Earth due to our meddling. The principal cause for this is the belief in creationism. This belief paints humans as separate from other creatures. Only through the theory of evolution can we escape from it. The concept of evolution is more relevant today than ever before. Next time you see your pet dog or a cat or any other creature, call them over. Reflect on the deep shared bond that connects you and them.